Joining us now is William Shackle, founder of Nuclear for Australia. Will, great to see you. You're over there in Dubai. It's very uh, late at night. Thank you so much for staying up. Tell us why you're the only Australian there supporting nuclear energy. <laughs> what are these other 49 clowns doing? Are they sitting in the cafe? Are they, uh, you know, what are they doing? Are they invited into any of the meetings? What's going on, Will? Look, I haven't actually seen many of the Australian delegation at COP28, but what I sure have seen is all of the people from around the world, from the 32 countries around the world that currently have nuclear energy, and I've seen them, I've been able to talk to them and been able to gain their perspective where they've been able to show me the success that they're having with nuclear energy. So I think in your framing at the start of this interview, you're correct. The world is going nuclear and COP28 is just the foundation of that, especially with the pledge to triple global nuclear energy capacity by 2050, but also really importantly, the setting of COP28 this year. The UAE is home to the largest source of clean energy in the region, the Baraka nuclear power plant, which was built in around a decade's time. So there is no better place to have COP28 this year, and nuclear is one of the major focuses at this COP, which I think is a great thing for the world because it's one thing, of course, that nuclear energy is a great solution for climate change. But as well as that, if we do want to reach net zero, we need to consider solutions like nuclear if we want to keep the lights on if we, and if we want to keep electricity bills down as well. James, tell us more, Will, about this declaration that just came down. And I think it was led by the United States, announced by John Kerry, the great climate warrior, um, <laughs> announcing this pledge to triple nuclear energy. Tell us what there's actually called for. What does that mean in practice? And, you know, I know you say you haven't seen much of the Australian delegation, but surely this would leave Chris Bowen hanging out on a limb. Yeah, OK. So in regards to the uh, pledge which was signed, actually, uh, yesterday, I wasn't actually, unfortunately there, but basically they're calling for a tripling of global nuclear energy capacity by 2050. This was a ministerial... Uh, pledge that they made. There's also going to be a pledge by corporations in the nuclear industry on the 5th of December, which is expected to join this, to make sure that this is an actual target, which they're going to be able to make. But it's a huge announcement, and it's also expected to be uh, joined by a declaration calling on the World Bank and other financial institutions to up their game and open up their lending policies to also include nuclear energy, given it's such a clean solution. Look, I think it is disappointing that the Australian delegation, in the context of all that's happening with nuclear energy at COP, is not coming to the table. We're really just sitting on the sidelines when it comes to nuclear energy at this year's COP, and I think that's really disappointing. So I hope that when the minister turns up next week and when there's some more action from the Australian delegation, if they want to be taken seriously on climate action, then they need to consider the role of nuclear energy because we know nuclear energy is one of the cleanest forms of power and it is the most reliable form of power. So Rita. if you want to be taken seriously on, on climate change, especially when Australia is not on track to reach our emissions targets, we need to look at other options. And for me, that has to include nuclear energy. Well, Chris Bowen seems to be an absolute ideologue when it comes to this. Have you had any influence speaking to, uh, perhaps not him, but speaking to bureaucrats and, and trying to uh, impress upon them that the rest of the world has moved on, the rest of the world is uh, utilising our uranium often to give their uh, citizens uh, clean, cheap, reliable energy? Well, look, not specifically in regards to Australian bureaucrats. I've made a petition calling on the Australian delegation at COP28 to support nuclear energy, which has over 4,500 signatures at nuclearforaustralia.com slash COP28. So that's one of my main messaging tools to get to the uh, Australian delegation at COP28. But the interesting thing is I've been able to talk to lots of world leaders here at COP28. It's funny how, how they just walk through uh, and you're able to ask them questions of, been able to meet a lot of people, including John Kerry. I've asked him about the nuclear involvement. I had a chance also to speak to Emmanuel Macron um, and lots of other leaders. Um, and they've all impressed upon me the fact that Australia should consider the role of nuclear energy. And just broadly, we should be considering the role of nuclear energy if we want any chance of reaching net zero. And that was also a sentiment shared by the head of the International Energy Agency, 
um, when, to which when I asked, does net zero need nuclear, he gave me a wink. So <laughs> it's very clear when you sort of events um, that the rest of the world is going nuclear. And it doesn't make sense for a country like Australia, with, which is going to be having floating small modular reactors for our national security, not to consider those same small modular reactors for our energy security, on top of the fact that we have great nuclear expertise and also the largest uranium reserves in the world. Will Shackle, so great to chat to you. Thanks for staying up late there in Dubai.